How Far Can I Get in 200 Days is finally here. And oh boy, is it a doozy. Obviously, this is a continuation of my 100 Days video, so if you want to catch up, go and watch that one first, and then come back to this one. These videos do take me a lot of work and effort to make, so if you do enjoy, I would very so much appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Speaking of support, you have all made me so grateful for all the support you've shown me. It's amazing, and I could not be more thankful. So for the next 200 days, my goal is to get as much done as I possibly can, which for me is getting as close to perfection as I can. It sounds simple, but trust me, there's a lot to do, which includes shipping all the produce and forageables, obtaining all four obelisks, buying the golden clock, completing all the monster slayer goals, having max hearts with every villager, maxing out my player skills, finding all the star drops, cooking every meal and crafting every item, catching every fish, and finally finding all 130 golden walnuts. Easy, right? Well, I didn't really have a plan for this, but but you'll be surprised at how much I managed to get done. Quick note, I'm using the same mods from the first 100 days and they'll be linked in the description if you want to try them out for yourselves. They don't change anything about the gameplay, they're just kind of quality of life improvements. Anyway, enough chat, let's get this 200 days going. I started out my first day back on the farm by taking a birthday gift to the wizard. Something I didn't do in my first 100 days was giving gifts on birthdays, and I won't regret that, right? I took Clip Clop for a ride through the backwoods and stumbled across Linus taking a dip in the lake. In the middle of winter. Entering Robin's home, I got in between an argument between Robin and Demetrius, and I put Demetrius in his place. I was there to get myself a shed, and I placed it ready to be built in that strip I talked about at the end of my 100 days. I took the minecarts to Clint's and bought myself some copper, and stopped back off at Robin's to get some wood. I spent the afternoon smelting all that copper, eventually I'll be turning the quarry into my main keg area, and I needed a lot of kegs. Hence, all the copper. It was the last day of the night market, so I headed down to the beach and took the submarine down to fish for some deep sea fish. The last one I needed was a blobfish and I got it on my first cast. Back home I used up all my resources to make 130 kegs and made my way to the quarry. Hold on, what's what's going on here? What it what does Linus want? Uh um What is Oh I see. <clears throat> Anyway, I started to clear out the quarry, but ran out of time, so I headed to bed. Day 102, I started out by collecting some maple syrup. I said hello to all my animals and took the minecarts back to the quarry to keep clearing it out. After it was all clear, I started on placing all my kegs and paths, and by the afternoon, I had about half the quarry filled. For the rest of the day, I applied some of that new Calvin Klein Monster Musk perfume and slayed monsters for Gil's monster eradication goals until bedtime. It was day 103 and my shed had finished being built. The purpose of this shed was to have it filled with crystallariums. One half would replicate diamonds and the other half would replicate jadestone. Diamonds would give me some extra money and jadestone will allow me to purchase staircases from the desert trader every Sunday. I headed up to Robbins again and I bought myself the deluxe shed upgrade before taking all my geodes over to Clint's. But it was just my luck that he's not in today, so once again I got my musk out and hit up the mines to slay some monsters, which I did for the rest of the day. Day 104, another batch of oak resin was awaiting my collection, so I picked them all up. It was Granny Evelyn's birthday today, so I rode Clip Clop over to her house and dropped off a nice big diamond for her. And with nothing much else to do at the moment, I decided a good use of my time would be spent in the mines slaying monsters. I completed some goals today, and picked myself up the slime charmer ring for slaying 1000 slimes, which means I'm immune to slimes now. That night back on the farm I lit up my crop area with some wooden braziers before calling it in for the night. Day 105, some of the ancient fruit of my greenhouse was finally ready to be picked. So I harvested what I could, I turned them all into seeds before replanting them. I took Willy's boat all the way to Ginger Island and made my way up to the forge on top of the volcano where I combined my slime charmer ring and burglar's ring together so I could have the benefits of both in one ring. From the top of the volcano to the bottom I dove into the volcano dungeon where I was on the lookout for magma sprites to slay. Later that night, I quickly ran over to Mr. Key's walnut room and checked how many golden walnuts I still needed until he had let me in. 48 out of 100 walnuts wasn't bad, but I still needed a few more to get through, so I took the boat back home and called it a night. On day 106, my winter forageables had sprouted, so I went along and picked them all. I turned all of them back into seeds and replanted them across my two crop areas before working on a pond area. The thing about this mill strip is it's seven tiles across, meaning sheds fit perfectly and ponds will fit perfectly too. However, 
However, I did run out of time to go to Robins to purchase one, so I'll have to do that another day. For the rest of the day, I went through my chests and picked out one of each resource to make a start on my shipping collections. There are exactly 145 items to ship, so you can understand why I wanted to whittle that number down a bit. Day 107, another round of ancient fruit was ready for me, so I turned them all into seeds and replanted them in the greenhouse. So you know how I wanted to get that pond? Yeah, so after 400 hours in this game, I still forget that Robin isn't in on Tuesdays, so you can imagine how stupid I felt watching her walk away from the store. Oh well, there's always tomorrow. Embarrassed, I headed up to the mines to try and catch some fish I hadn't caught. On level 20, I spent ages trying to catch a stonefish, but I got very unlucky and couldn't catch one. So I took a break and headed into town to pick up Gus's famous omelette quest and gave Leia her first gift for her birthday. And then it was back to fishing. After what felt like ages, I finally caught one and took the elevator down to level 60 to try and catch an ice pip. Did I catch one? No. Of course I didn't. Why would I? Day 108 I started out by doing some chores around the farm before heading up to Robin's. I'm getting my pond today and there's nothing anyone can do to stop me, damn it. I waited out in the snow before heading in but I got distracted painting my shed the colours of diamond and jadestone. Eh, yeah, get it? Because it's the same colours and... Yeah. Anyway, I finally got my pond and headed back to the farm to set up for another pond right underneath the first one. I'm getting two so that I can have sturgeons in one and a lava eel in the other. That way the sturgeon row can be turned into caviar and the lava eel row can be turned into aged row. These are two things I'll need for the shipping collections. I got some exercise in by doing a lap around the farm and did some foraging down at the beach. I headed on over to Arrowhead Island and tried my luck at catching the glacier fish, one of the five legendary fish, and I got it on my first try. Okay, maybe not, but I got it eventually. I placed a chest in my kitchen and put the glacier fish in it. My dream is to collect all the legendary fish to put in an aquarium one day. Speaking of legendary fish, I took off to the sewers to cast my line into the disgusting green sewer water, and I got my hands on the mutant carp. Not that I really wanted my hands on it, but... Yeah. I quickly ran into the mutant bug lair and fished up a slime jack, another fish I hadn't caught yet, and just before bed I fished outside the witch's hut and fished up a void salmon. Oh hey look, it's Santa! Oh, never mind. Day 109 was Christmas Day. I mean, Feast of the Winter Star. Same diff. But before I could head off to town, I had another round of ancient fruit ready waiting for me, and I was so close to filling up every space with ancient seeds, but unfortunately today wasn't the day. My person for this year's festival was Willy, and so I gave him a diamond. Pretty nice, right? My secret gift giver was Emily. And what did I get? <laughs> It's unbelievable. It was day 110 and it was Clint's birthday today. I took the minecart over to his shop and waited outside for him to open up. I must have got confused because I saw him walk out and I seemed quite sad about it. But then I quickly realized that I was just giving him a present and not upgrading my tools so I caught up to him and handed him an iron bar. Up at the mountain lake I fished myself up a sturgeon to put in my first pond when Robin had finished building it. And I moved my chest from the lake down to outside the rundown Jojima. Since it wasn't accessible yet I put some missing bundle items in the chest ready to go. I mooched my way down to the beach and fished out on the pier until night time. I dumped all the fish I had caught into the shipping bin and called it a night. The morning of day 111 I just did some chores around the farm. I popped by Robins to purchase myself my second and last fish pond and then I rode the mine elevator down to level 100 to try and get my hands on a lava eel, another fish I added to my collection. Up on level 60 I tried my luck again with catching an ice pip and yep first catch was an ice pip. Of course it was. Back on the farm I gathered up all my geodes, took a trip to the desert and turned my omni geodes into artifact troves. I saw Clint about opening them all up for me. Afterwards I quickly popped into the museum to drop off any new donations I had found and shipped off everything else for some extra cash. That night I visited the Star Drop Saloon where I got myself a few cooking recipes and gave Pam and Shane a love gift. Being in the saloon reminded me about Gus's special order I hadn't done yet so I took over two dozen eggs and left them in his fridge. Back home I was dreaming. Not about how awesome I am, but about what I wanted to fill the rest of the farm with. A slime hutch down here? Maybe one day. Day 112, Gus somehow managed to fit a whole ass mini fridge in my mailbox. So I moved some furniture around to fit it into the kitchen. And then I was off to Ginger Island once again. There are three unique fish that can be caught around Ginger Island. A blue discus, which I caught in the river. A lionfish, which I caught from the ocean. And a stingray in the pirate's cove. But I didn't have access to that just yet, so I'll get that another day. On the way to the volcano, I dropped off a snake skull I had fished up to Professor Snail. And then mined my way through a rock trying to find a mummified bat. Did I find one? Actually, I did. And I dropped it off on the way back home. 
Back in the valley, I dropped by the saloon and saw everyone enjoying the omelette I funded with my own eggs, and I gave another loved gift to both Shane and Pam again before calling it a night. Day 113 was the first day of spring and the start of my second year on the farm. When I walked outside, I was met by a new guy called Kent, who was back in the valley after serving in the army. I headed to the greenhouse and finally filled up every spot with ancient seeds and it was now just a waning game. I rode Clip Clop into town and headed into Piers to grab my seeds for the season. In year two, I wasn't as worried about crops being my main source of income. More, I wanted to grow lots of everything to cover my bases later on for gifts, cooking and crafting. So back on the farm I planted 48 parsnips, 48 cauliflower, 48 potatoes, 48 garlic, 48 blue jazz seeds and 48 tulips. Back in town I picked up a fishing special quest before taking a ferry ride over to Ginger Island. Once on the island I spent the evening clearing out the island farm of all its resources and started to work on a large crop area. You see all these iridium sprinklers? Yeah, they're gonna hold ancient fruit and only ancient fruit. I put a quality sprinkler off to the side and planted a melon, a garlic and wheat for the gourd on frog and started to plant all my ancient fruit seeds that I had left over from this morning. I got them all planted just before it got too late and also I finally got level 10 foraging which ticks off my goal from the last 100 days. Day 114 I was out in the rain adding some paths to my island farm area to help stop weeds from attacking my crops. I tried to add a gap in the pathways like I tried to do next to my oak resin farm all that time ago but it turns out I never learned because it just looked stupid so I just filled it in. Happy with how my farm was looking, I found a gem bird on the north part of my island and put the amethyst on the top pedestal in the secret area. Only three more to get. I travelled back to the valley via boat and back home I chucked my sturgeon into one of my ponds and said hello to my animals, then cleared out the farm of any debris that had spawned. With Kent back in the valley I could now continue with the war memento quest that weird lady on the island had given me. So I took the war memento to Kent who in turn gave me some gourmet tomato salt. I handed that off to Gus who traded it for a Stardew Valley rose, and who better to give a rose to than Sandy. She loved the flower and gave me a universal remote and returned. I headed over to George and Evelyn's place but before I could give George his remote, Evelyn kindly gave me the recipe to bake some cookies. I passed the remote on to George who gave me an arctic shard and I took the shard down to the wizard who waved me off with a worm. Gee, thanks. But who better to love worms than Willy? No one. Which is why I handed the worm off to Willy who finally gave me the pirate's locket. Which I'll return to the lady another day as it got too late to take the ferry. I took off to the secret woods for some extra hardwood before heading to bed. Day 115 I added a couple of crystallariums to my shed and took off to Ginger Island. I dropped the locket off to the strange lady who was very thankful and got enough golden walnuts to build the resort on the beach. This removed the debris in the way of the pirate's cove where I went and fished up a stingray to add to my collections. Back in the valley I wanted to crack open a golden coconut but missed out by a couple of seconds. So close. Instead I took my anger out on the tree farm in the desert and got rid of it all. Mainly because I'll be rich enough soon to buy it when I need it. That night I made a start on the mysterious Mr. Key quest by putting a battery in the electrical box in the tunnel. However the next part required me to put a rainbow shell up in a box at the railroad and do you think I have one? Of course not. So I'll have to put a pause on that quest until summertime. On day 116 another ancient fruit harvest was ready in my greenhouse and I waited patiently outside Robins for about an hour before handing Demetrius a golden pumpkin. You see Demetrius has a chance to send you a rainbow shell but I never got one so that was totally worth it. Anyway I popped by Clint's to finally open my golden coconut and gave a second golden pumpkin to Kent as a birthday gift. Over on Ginger Island I turned all my ancient fruit into more seeds to plant and filled out more of the ancient fruit area. I did remember that on even numbered days when it's not raining the one once unreachable cove would be filled with pirates. And I can earn some golden walnuts by playing rounds of darts, which I actually smashed this chump at three times over. Back on the farm I added three chests between the crop area to hold my crops when they've been harvested, and overnight the old Jojamart was struck by lightning, meaning the missing bundle was there waiting for me to complete. Day 117 was a rainy day, so I picked my garlic and parsnips since my junimos won't come out to pick crops in the rain. I made three preserved jars to put between my two ponds, so when they start producing roe, I'll be able to turn them into caviar and aged roe. I popped by Piers and got myself more seeds to replant back on the farm and headed up to the mountain lake to catch myself the legend, which was the third legendary fish I needed to catch. This is gonna be a piece of cake, right? No, oh, oh, that's not it. Can you just, oh, can you just stop? Oh my god, I lost that. Oh, why is this so hard? Oh, you're kidding me, dude! Still not it! <clears throat> Unfortunately, I did not catch it, so I went to bed.
Day 118, I started my day with some chores around the farm before gifting Abigail an amethyst and heading over to Ginger Island. I hit up the volcano dungeon to farm magma sprites and gather materials, and honestly, I had no idea you could get dragon teeth from lava lurks, which is game changing. 400 hours in and I'm still learning new stuff. So I spent most of the day running around the dungeon and finishing the day with six dragon teeth along with lots of other stuff which was not a bad effort at all. Before bed I dropped a diamond into the sturgeon pond as requested and called it a night. Day 119 my house was upgraded. I cannot remember when I found time to purchase that but it's here now and it looks great. I gave Maya Lewis a birthday present and casually waited for Abigail to leave her room to gift her another amethyst. This is not creepy, I swear. Being a very lucky day, I bought some bombs from the dwarf and hit up the skull cavern, which is where I spent the rest of my day. It was day 120 and the Junimos were doing a great job at picking my crops. I think today I made the decision to not replant any crops as I was going to fill the crop area with strawberries in a few days from the egg festival. I gave Robins a visit and purchased myself a slime hutch to be built at the bottom of the farm and started work on decorating it. I'll leave the meteor there for now. I want to try and incorporate it into the aesthetic somehow. I continued to add stone pathways around the hutch and farm to give myself a better understanding of what the bottom of the farm was going to look like. Hopefully this would give me some good ideas about what to fill it with. Later that night I decided a good way to fill this line of unused land would be to fill it with trees and grass so that's exactly what I did and I think it'll turn out great. Day 121 I waited outside Abigail's room once again to give her a present. It's because I want her to like me. Okay. Anyway, I passed the special quest board and picked up Robin's resource rush, which I totally don't forget about and never complete. Over on Ginger Island, I journey into the volcano dungeon once again to slay magma sprites and gather materials. Back on the farm that night, I noticed an artifact spot and managed to dig up a snake vertebrae. Very rare, and surely that can't happen twice. Wait, wait, what? Okay, I guess this makes up for not catching the legend. Well, with both snake vertebrae in hand, I took them straight to Professor Snail, who rewarded me with some golden walnuts and a mango sapling. Back home, I planted the mango tree sapling in my greenhouse with the other fruit trees and called in a night. Day 122, Marlin came in the pouring rain to offer me a slime egg. He noticed I had built a slime hutch and had come to spread his slime farming knowledge. It was also Vincent's birthday today, so I popped by his house and gave him his favourite, some grapes. And because it was raining, I was ready to have a second go at this bastard I called the legend. The battle waged on, and after hours of failed attempts and waiting for it to bite, I finally caught it. I don't have much in my notes about this day, but I do have one quote that reads, This fish can suck my ass." Back home I worked on the interior of my slime hutch, this was a design that I do every time and I think it looks pretty good. If it ain't broke, don't fix it I say. I added some iron fencing and a gate to the front of the hutch and called it in for the night. On day 123 I rode the minecart over to the quarry as I had some more kegs to fill it up with. I quickly realised that I wasn't utilising the space well enough with the layout I had and changed it so the kegs were within rows of two instead of one. That way I'd be able to fit more rows in. It took me most of the day to reorganise it to how I wanted it to but after I had finished it was looking very promising. For the rest of the day I just fluffed around the farm until bed. Day 123. 124 I had my first sturgeon row which I chucked into a preserve jar to make some caviar. I prepped my crop area which was looking a bit slack for all the strawberry seeds I was going to buy tomorrow and went around the town giving out some gifts to people I had no hearts with. In all honesty I felt a little bit like Santa Claus. Halfway through my gift giving I walked into a rock rejuvenation session which looked uh odd. But hey, each to their own. I paid the dwarf a visit to purchase a rare crow he was selling, which I swapped out with a boring one back on the farm. I then spent the rest of the night on level 100 in the mines trying to fish up a lava eel for my second pond. However, I fished up nothing but trash, so I just went to bed. Day 125 was the day of the egg festival, so I got my fields ready and headed on over to town. I went to Pierre's stall and bought all the strawberry seeds I needed, then proceeded to demolish everyone at the egg hunt for the second year in a row. I actually think I got the same amount of eggs as I did last year. After collecting my winnings, I planted all my strawberry seeds and headed to bed. Day 126 was the day of birth for Haley, but before I could drop off her present, I went to PS to get me some bean starter. Then I waited outside Haley's room, again this is not creepy, stop, and gave her a nice diamond for her birthday. Then I stopped by Marnie's to get some decorative hay bales. Back on the farm, I planted my beans and put the decorative hay bales around the animal area, just to give it a bit of colour and fun. I decided to try my luck at catching a lava eel again. Honestly, I should have done some more research at the time because I had no idea the chances of catching one here compared to the top of the volcano on Ginger Island is close to none. So naively, I fished up trash for the rest of the night until it was bedtime. On day 127, I picked up another fishing special quest to catch some sardines and then I headed on over to Ginger Island. All three of my crops on the island farm were growing, so I showed them to the gourmand frog who rewarded me with 15 golden walnuts for growing them. 
Using some of those golden walnuts, I unlocked the island trader who will come in handy later. I strolled on over to the entrance of the volcano dungeon and... Hold on, wait a minute. Sorry. Okay. I'll be honest, I have no idea what's going on here, but I have never seen that before. The real reason I came here was to fish for a lava eel. I did my research, which I caught on my first cast. I walked back past this true oddity and headed over to the dig site, which I cleared out for some resources. Later on, I had a real heart-to-heart -heart with my boy Leo and went looking for some golden walnuts I hadn't found yet. And then I took a late night boat ride home back to the valley, dropped my lava eel into its pond and went to bed. Day 128, I did some chores around the farm before heading over to Ginger Island. I hit up the island trader to get myself a golden coconut and a banana sapling to pond to my greenhouse and travel back to the valley. At the museum, I dropped off some artifacts I had found and cracked open my golden coconuts, which gave me nothing. Absolutely nothing. Back on the farm, I popped my banana sapling down at my greenhouse and was now full of every fruit tree possible. And then I made the hardest decision of my life. <sighs> I got rid of the meteorite. I know, I know, I'm, I'm heartbroken too. I wanted to make it work so badly, but I just couldn't, so it had to go. But a witch flew over my coop that night and gave me a void egg, but you're a little too late for that, unfortunately, Mrs. Witch. Day 129, I spent the day down on the pier catching sardines for Demetrius' special quest, but I finished it in the late afternoon, so I went past the Adventurer's Guild to check on my monster slayer goals and admired my quarry full of kegs for a while. I didn't achieve too much else for the rest of the day, so I just called it an early night. It was day 130 and I was making it up to my lost friend to make the section look just as beautiful as he was. So I planted some trees, added a path and covered it with grass. That's for you pal. In town I picked up a beer for Pam's birthday, probably not the best idea if she's meant to be driving but hey, I'm not needing her driving services today so I think it's all good. I took the boat over to Ginger Island and I actually cannot make this up but I got another snake vertebrae. Someone please tell me if this is insane luck or if I'm just really hyping myself up too much. That aside, for the rest of the day I spent it scouring the volcano dungeon, slaying magma sprites and searching for useful minerals. Day 131, it was back to Ginger Island. I found a gem bird on the west side of the island and put a topaz on top of its pedestal. And then I was back to the volcano to get my grind on, which I did for the rest of the day. Day 132, my first lava eel row was ready, so I put it in the preserve jar ready to be made into aged row. I dropped in three fire quartz to help with their breeding process and added a gate on the other side of my animal area. I ventured into the quarry mine and bit up some floating skulls and managed to finally get my hands on the golden scythe. Afterwards, I rode into town to pick up a pizza from the saloon which I passed on to Shane as a birthday gift because it's his birthday today. Into the night, I fluffed around the farm and thought about what I could do with certain sections. I moved my lightning rods once again and went to bed. Day 133, my first strawberry harvest was ready, but thanks to my handy dandy junior mows, I won't have to pick them. My ancient fruit were looking nice and harvestable, minus a few, but with the amount I had, I could take them to the quarry and turn them into wine, which is exactly what I did. Sunday would now forever be the ancient fruit picking day as they regrow every seven days, meaning Saturday nights would be when I collect all my ancient fruit wine. I peeked into the rundown Joja Mart and had a look at what I needed for the missing bundle. The great thing is that you only need five out of the six things to complete it and I had five things ready and available excluding the silver quality wine. So back on the farm I put a dino egg into a mayo machine and made some dino mayo. I rode clip clop over to Pierre's to buy some cooking supplies and took all my geodes to Clint's. After opening about 50 geodes I had quite the haul, some of which I hadn't collected yet so I dropped them off at the museum to donate and the rest I shipped off for money. A quick look at my minerals collection so that I only had about five left to get. I put the dino mayo I had made into the chest I had for the missing bundle and collected all my strawberries. I kept a few and shipped the rest. And that was the day over and done with. Day 134 I spent in the skull cabin. Yep, that's about it. Oh wait, we had another Virgin Mary birth overnight as Crispy gave birth to a baby pig who I named Bacon. On day 135 I picked up a Ginger Island special quest from the board which tasked me to catch five of each unique fish, so off I went. I did bring some taro with me to plant next to the river to get my golden walnuts for farming, and then I was off fishing for the rest of the day. I caught five blue discus from the river, five lionfish from the ocean, and five stingrays from the pirate's cove, which pretty much kept me busy for the whole day. Day 136 I did some chores around the farm before going to crack open a golden coconut before realizing it was locked. Now why is that I wonder? Because it's the flower dance. Will I be attending? Absolutely not. Not after what happened last year. I even plucked up the courage to ask Abigail to dance with me but got absolutely rejected. Oh. 
I'm not putting myself through that again. So I decided to get away from my past mistakes by destroying part of the farm. I did have a reason for doing this though because I needed some place to put my gold clock when I eventually get it, so what better place to put it than right smack bang in the middle of the farm. I continued to expand my pathways and I added a lovely little path between the slime hutch and crop area. For the rest of the day until bedtime I just spent smelting ores. Day 130 was another round of strawberries and I'll pick that later thanks to my junimos. I patiently waited outside Clint's, we all know how patient I am, and once in Inside, I cracked open my golden coconut in hopes of a fossilized skull, but I got rubbish again. So really worth me waiting, eh? Over on Ginger Island, I found a third gem bird outside Leo's hut, which gave me the third gem to put on its pedestal. And once again, I was back in the volcano dungeon on the grind. I did find these fellas taking a nice warm soak in the lava, and I thought I'd leave them to it, after which I went to bed. The morning of day 138, I travelled back to the valley to find my Junimos frozen in time? I know they're cute and all, but this is just creepy. I gathered up all my strawberries and shipped them off. I ran around finishing up some chores before heading over to Pierre's to give him a birthday gift. I gave him a rabbit rabbit's foot because hey, everyone loves rabbit feet. Yeah. I also dropped off some caviar to my missing bundle chest. Because I only had one gem left to get from a gem bird on Ginger Island, I thought I'd try every other gem on the last pedestal until I got it right, which rewarded me with five golden walnuts. And as I was looking for golden walnuts around the island farm, I dug up another snake vertebrae. That's four. Count them. Four. Surely that's super lucky. After that rush of adrenaline, I wasn't too sure what to do with myself, so I headed back home and just went to bed. I started out day 139 by getting Clint to whack open some golden coconuts for me. I didn't get my fossil skull but I did get this sick ass golden coconut helmet. It was also Emily's birthday today so I waited outside her room, man I really gotta stop doing this, until she finally came out to receive her gift. I'd like to introduce you all to a new segment I'd like to call Panning with Poxio. By panning in this river here, I will attempt to get my hands on the elusive lucky ring, which will complete my ring collection. This ring grants the player with plus one luck and I just really want it. Unfortunately today was not my lucky day. But back on the farm, I collected all my ancient fruit wine from the quarry and shipped it off where I made a solid 224,000 gold. Day 140 was a Sunday and the last day of spring, so you know what that means. Ancient fruit picking. After I'd picked all the ancient fruit out of the greenhouse, I took off to the missing bundle as all I needed was a few more gold quality ancient fruit. I took everything inside to complete the bundle and I said my last goodbye to the Junimos. You know, except they're the ones who labor on my farm for free. It's okay, they're unionized. Up at the quarry, I re-kegged my ancient fruit. I popped into Robins on the way past and renovated my house a little. I added a southern room and a corner room and purchased the final upgrade on my house. And for the rest of the day my time was spent diving through the skull cavern. And I'll be honest here I started on level 1 at 12.40 and by the time I passed out at 2am I had managed to reach level 120 which is a pretty damn good effort and I had quite the haul of the show for it. Overnight the old Jojo Mart was then renovated by the junior modes and turned into a movie theatre. Day 141 was the first day of summer. I started my day by sorting my previous night's haul into my chests and seeing Pierre about some summer crop seeds. I got myself 15 hop starters and 177 blueberry seeds. These two will fill my bottom crop area. And also I got 48 red cabbage seeds, 48 spangle seeds, 48 radish seeds, and finally 48 tomato seeds. These would fill up my top area and my plan was as crops are grown and harvested, I'd go back and replace them with other seeds over the season so I can eventually grow every summer crop. I rode clip clop back to the farm and planted all my seeds. Being the start of the week, the special quest board had reset, so I picked up the island ingredients quest, which tasked me with growing and shipping 100 taro. Hey, remember how I planted that taro a while ago? Yeah, pretty lucky, eh? But I did need this quest so I could get the crafting recipe for solar panels, which would give me more batteries, which I was running low on. Over on Ginger Island, I picked some ancient fruit that had grown and turned them all into seeds to replant, and I filled more of my farm, which I ended up doing for the rest of the day. Day 142, my taro was ready to be picked so I gathered them all up and put them through the seed maker to get more seeds to replant. 100 taro was a lot but I had the whole season to complete it which was heaps of time. I quickly took a trip back home to make more seed makers and got some more taro seeds from my chest before heading back and planting them all around the river. And welcome back everyone to Panning with Poxiel. Unfortunately I did not get my ring today. I spent the morning of day 143 waiting outside the saloon in the pouring rain and thunder. Because I needed more salads and I think that's a very reasonable reason to stand out in the rain for 3 hours, right? I busted out some sick moves on Clip Clop heading down to the beach and I took the boat across to Ginger Island where guess what? 
I was back in the dungeon doing what? Grinding, of course. Always grinding for those resources. Which took up the rest of my day, actually. Day 144, I headed on down to Marnie's ranch, where I definitely did not wait for Jazz to leave her room to jump scare her with a birthday present. That's just not like me. And then it was back to Ginger Island, where I picked some ready-to-harvest ancient fruit. I turned them all into seeds and replanted them on the farm. And then, of course, it was time for our favourite segment, and say it with me now, panning with... Poxil! No, I didn't get it. Thanks for asking. On the morning of day 145, I was about to finally upgrade my pickaxe to Iridium when- Clint. No. Don't- Don't do this to me, man. <sighs> Instead, I headed down to the pier off the tide pools and caught myself the Crimson Fish, the fourth legendary fish. Thank god I didn't have any problems with this one because my heart would not have been able to take it. Later that evening I went to see how many golden walnuts I needed to open Mr. Key's walnut room and it turns out I had over 100 because he kindly let me in. I had a quick look around but I won't be using this room much until a bit further on. To finish off the day I added a couple more crystallariums to my shed and called it a night. Day 146 I started out by working on the bottom of my animal area. I haven't touched it in a while and I thought I'd make it look a little bit nicer. But before I could finish, I quickly popped by Clint's to get the pickaxe upgrade I meant to get yesterday. I added some wooden paths to add some detail and made three of each machine to put in the spaces. I know it doesn't fill up completely, but I don't have that many animals and it definitely looks a lot better. With nothing much to do, I took a super cucumber I had saved to the hidden box just north of Clint's place and got one of the three secret statues which I then placed back on the farm. Being a Saturday night, I collected up all of my ancient fruit wine from the quarry and shipped it off before bedtime. Day 147, I started off the day collecting my ancient fruit out of my greenhouse, made use of my animal product machines, and checked in on my slimes. My lava eels requested two diamonds, which I happily obliged to give them, and I went off to Piers to buy some seeds. Over up at the quarry, I placed my ancient fruit into the kegs, and I passed Robbins to purchase the furniture catalog. On the way back home, I popped into Piers to get his catalog, and I replanted my seeds back in my crop area. For the rest of the day, I put my interior design hat on and worked on the living room. In the end, I went with this modern tea room inspired look, which I was genuinely really happy with. I kind of didn't have a plan, and I was going with the flow, but I was very happy with the outcome. I have thought about making an interior design guide video, so let me know in the comments if you think I should make one. It was day 148 and my Iridium pack axe was finally done, so I went over to Clint's to pick it up. Waiting for me on Ginger Island was another round of ancient fruit, so I picked them all, turned them all into seeds, replanted them, filling more of my farm, and she was looking pretty healthy. Back in the valley, it was Gus's birthday, so I gave him a nice big diamond. For the rest of the evening, I put my interior design hat back on and worked on my bedroom. Again, I didn't really have a plan for this, but I kind of rolled with the punches and ended up with this. Not too shabby if you ask me, I'm a big fan. I had a bit of time left in my day, so I quickly spruced up the kitchen with some new flooring, wallpaper, and decorations. Day 149, another round of Tara was ready for me on Ginger Island, so I harvested them all, made them all into seeds, and replanted them so I'd have more than enough taro to ship off for the special quest. For the rest of the day, I kind of just did chores, although I did keep working on the kitchen area and the farmhouse. But why stop there? I decided to spice up the kids' room. I'll eventually add more soft toys when I get my hands on them, but for three days of interior design work, my home is looking pretty nice. Day 150 marks the halfway point, and I feel like I'm on a roll. I spent the morning buying seeds from Pierre and Sandy and refilling my crop area with them before giving Maru a birthday present since it was her birthday today. With nothing much else to do, I headed inside to work on this little corner room. This is where I'm going to show off all my legendary fish, as you can see, and I added a little desk set up to add some purpose to the room. A little study area, if you will. I'm still not too sure what I want the southernmost room to look like, but I'm sure something will come to me. For the rest of the night, I kind of just mooched around the farm, smelting ores and making a start on crafting every item before bedtime. Day 151, I did some chores around the farm and headed up to Robin's, but quickly realized that today was the day of the luau. Man, I am terrible at remembering festival dates. Anyway, I got myself a gold truffle and headed down to the beach. I chucked it into the soup and the mayor was very happy with the taste. So good, in fact, it was the best he'd ever tasted. It was a good luck day on day 152, so I got some bombs ready and I think you know where this is going. That's right, it's a skull cabin run. Down on level 83, I managed to find the secret note from Mr. Key to find him on level 100, which was perfect timing because I was only 17 levels away. But time was running out, so with all the stone I had, I crafted myself some staircases and got to level 100 just in time where I drank some iridium snake milk, which permanently increases my health by 25. I then passed out in the cavern. Day 153 was Alex's birthday. 
day, so I rode Clip Clop over in the rain to give him a present. I then stopped over at Clint's to put my axe for an Iridium upgrade and paid Robin a visit to give my house a fresh new coat of paint. Some more ancient fruit was ready for me on Ginger Island, so I turned them all into seeds and replanted them. Back at the quarry, my wine was ready, so I collected it all up and shipped it off before bed. Day 154 was another ancient fruit harvest in my greenhouse, so I collected all of them up and shoved them into the kegs over at the quarry. While I was there, I cleared out the debris that had spawned and smelted some ores back on the farm. I took a quick trip to Robbins to purchase a ton of wood and if it isn't obvious by now I'm expanding the quarry with more kegs. After smelting copper and iron ore for most of the day I had 110 kegs ready to go. Day 155 I started out my day by picking up my now complete Iridium Max from Clint's. Cheers bud. And then I headed up to the quarry to place down all the kegs I had made which almost filled up the quarry but just not quite. Honey was blocking my way to get back onto the farm and I had an absolute nightmare navigating my tree farm, but once I was I rode on through down to the boat and it was off to Ginger Island. More ancient fruit had grown so I put them through the seed makers and replanted them all. How did I spend the rest of my day you ask? Well I was back at the dig site for panning with Poxiel! No, I did not get the ring. Day 156, I woke up to a riverside full of taro, which I went through and harvested. I shipped them all off except a few just in case I needed them for cooking tomorrow and I'll complete the special quest. Back on the farm, my blueberries had been picked by my lovely and unionized, might I add, Junimos, so I collected them all and shipped them off. Down in the sewers, I paid the Statue of Uncertainty a visit and paid to have my foraging skills changed overnight. I don't have much use to have more wood shot from trees, so I was going to opt for the double foraging chance perk and guaranteed max quality forageables perk. Back on the farm I moved my lightning rods yet again as I was going to prep an area by the lake to hold some solar panels. For the rest of the night I smelted ore to make solar panels and finished off the area where I was going to put them. I went to bed and overnight I chose my new foraging perks. Day 157 I had the recipe to make solar panels and I had enough resources to make six of them, which I placed down next to the lake. I replaced some freshly picked summer spangle flowers with some hot pepper seeds and it was Sam's birthday today. So I gave him his favourite, a cactus fruit. And then it was back to the island. Outside Leo's hut I placed a banana on his table where the gorilla kindly gave me some golden walnuts in return. For the rest of the day I hit the volcano dungeon and managed to complete the magma sprite monster slayer goal before returning to the valley and heading to bed. It was day 158 and I was back doing some chores around the farm. But I was so close to filling the whole quarry with kegs though I gathered all the materials I needed and finally the quarry was now filled to the brim with kegs ready for wine making. I made some more crystallariums and added them to the shed. I got rid of my tomato plants since they served their purpose and I replaced them with sunflower seeds. Before bed I went through my crop chest and got one of each crop to ship off to add to my shipping collections. Day 159 was the day of Demetrius' birthday so I surprised him with a juicy strawberry. Over at Abigail's house I was offered to play some Journey of the Prairie King but due to my keyboard being a 60% keyboard I couldn't shoot and move at the same time aka a recipe for death which is exactly what happened. I didn't last very long. Disappointed I got some wheat seeds from Piers and rode Clip Clop back to plant them in my crop area. I noticed I was running low on fibre so I spent the rest of the day down in the mines resetting level 80 getting me some more fiber. I spent the morning of day 160 sprucing up the bottom lake area as it was looking a little bare. I planted some trees, added some lamp posts and grass and once all those trees are grown I think it'll look quite nice. Down at the beach I picked up a rainbow shell before heading off to replant some ancient fruit on my island farm. It was so close to being full, so close. And being a Saturday night, my wine was good to go and ready to be collected, so I collected them all up. I took my rainbow shell up to the railroad and got the next part to the mysterious Mr. Key quest. Yeah, remember that? I dumped my wine into the shipping bin and I hit the hay. Day 161, I hit the greenhouse and picked my ancient fruit before dumping it all into kegs up at the quarry. Over in the desert, I was buying myself some beet seeds. You see, the next part of the mysterious Mr. Key quest was to hide 10 beets in Mayor Lewis's fridge, but beets only grow in spring, meaning I have to plant them all on Ginger Island. But before I could, I showed Alex my undeniably solid sporting skills. Well, with my ego shattered, I planted my beets in silence. But I found a new source of energy as it was another installment of Panning with Poxiel. Oh, why can't I find this damn ring? Day 162 was the day I finally filled up every spot for ancient seeds on my island farm. Now I just had to wait for them all to grow. Back on the farm I gave my lava eels a mega bomb, that seems dangerous, and it was the dwarf's birthday today so I headed up to the mines and dropped off a jade stone to him. Over in the desert I caught myself a scorpion carp which left me with three fish left to catch and I rounded off the day smelting ores and running aimlessly around the farm. I did a big unboxing with my geodes on day 163 over at Clint's in hopes of obtaining a few more minerals 
minerals, which I did and I donated them to the museum which left me with two more minerals to get to complete the collection. I then made a start on cooking meals. I even placed three extra chests in the kitchen to hold them all, and I pretty much did this for the rest of the day. I just cooked meals. Day 164 was old mate Willie's birthday, so I rode Clip Clop down to the pier and gave him a nice big diamond. I then settled myself in to do some fishing. Some cooking recipes require certain fish, and I was hoping to catch a few of them while I was here. A bit later on, I changed it up and fished in the river for the same reason. And wow, would you look at that, I'm up at the mountain lake fishing. After a day of fishing, I shoved my haul of fish into a chest in the kitchen and spent the rest of the night fluffing around the farm before bed. The morning of day 165, I did some wood collecting. I hadn't used my iridium axe a lot so I put it to the test by cutting down all the trees in the valley, which actually took up a lot of time so by the evening I had enough to go panning. Where? Oh no, never mind, I'm just fishing. I fished myself up a fossilized spine which left me with only one more thing to get for Professor Snail and it was that damn skull from a golden coconut. Okay, now it's time for panning with Poxio. God, I swear to God I'm never going to get this stupid ring. It's just so stupid. Why did it? do this to me. It's just a stupid ring. Like, why can't I get it? It's too easy. Day 166, I picked and replanted my sunflowers before heading back to the island. While I was there, I handed Leo a duck feather since it was his birthday today. At the island trader, I purchased a couple of recipes and a couple of golden coconuts and then I headed into the volcano dungeon for the day. Back on the farm, I had a quick look at my shipping collection page and it was looking a lot better than when I started this 200 days. With nothing else to do, I decided to head to bed. Day 167, I braved the rainy weather and did some chores around the farm. Over at Clint's I opened up those two golden coconuts I got from this island trader yesterday and I finally got the fossilized skull. So you can guess exactly where I was headed next, but before I could drop off the skull I found Leo contemplating life on the beach. My beets had finally grown so I harvested all of them and then I dropped off the skull which completed Professor Snail's mini museum of fossils. Back in the valley I took 10 beets to Lewis's house and then I was tasked to give the desert dragon his last meal. But luckily I knew exactly what that meant, so I headed off to the desert and I fed the dragon corpse a solar essence. And in true treasure hunt fashion, of course the final prize was waiting for me right where I started, in the log pile in my own house. So I was awarded the casino club card which allowed me to get past the security guard in the oasis shop. So of course I went there to see what it was all about. I bought myself some key coins and slaved away on the slot machines. I couldn't turn a profit, so I tried my hands at a game of Calico Jack, but I didn't know how to play and I got my ass handed to me so I left with my tail between my legs. I'll be back. But it wasn't all bust because my wine was ready for me so I paid the quarry a visit and collected them all before shipping them off and heading to bed. Day 168 was the final day of summer. I harvested all of my ancient fruit from the greenhouse but unfortunately because there was a festival being set up on the beach I couldn't access the boat to get to Ginger Island so I had to craft myself an island warp totem. But once I was there I harvested more ancient fruit and kicked them back up at the quarry. I spent the rest of the day moping around the farm tidying things up for the fall season. I smelt the fresh fall air the morning of day 169 and it's time for my favourite season. I cleared out all the dead and alive crops from my crop area and mooched on over to Pierre's. I bought myself a whole load of cranberry seeds for the bottom field and 48 seeds of each yam, bok choy, pumpkin and amaranth. I was pretty much going to go with the same setup for my crops this summer. In the top field as crops get harvested I'll replace them with new ones so I can grow lots of each crop to have ready for me when I need them. I picked up the juicy bug quest from the special quest board in town and headed into the volcano dungeon as I wanted to replace that one dragon tooth I used yesterday by bypassing the beach. And yep, I ended up with six. And this is pretty much what I did until bedtime. Day 170 was Penny's birthday, so I gave her a nice emerald. Over at the wooden bridge by the movie theater, I fished up the final legendary fish I needed, the angler. I went to put it in my aquarium, but unfortunately you can't have more than four fish at a time in there. So after a while of trying to figure out what I was gonna do, I kept the same layout, but I kept all the seasonal legendary fish in the main tank, and the mutant carp can chill in the smaller one for now. Over on the island farm, I took some pineapple seeds and planted them around a few quality sprinklers. To finish off the day, I fished at the mountain lake and caught myself a midnight carp which meant I had one fish left to catch. The morning of day 171 it was straight to the beach to catch the final fish. I caught myself an albacore and it was complete. I have caught every single fish. Afterwards I had to deal with a grouchy George. I made short work of the juicy bug special quest down in the mines by applying some monster musk and going to town on the bugs. I dropped off all the bug meat to Willie and headed back home. Day 172 my day started off well as I got another star drop in the mail courtesy of Willie. After doing 
doing some chores around the farm, I found Willie on the beach using that bug meat I had got him and he taught me how to craft a quality bobber in return. Over on Ginger Island, I found a couple more golden walnuts before we went panning with Poxil. And I got it, I got, I got the ring. <laughs> Just kidding, I got you though, didn't I? Yeah, so the joke is totally on you all watching and definitely not me, who's been trying to get this ring for so long. Day 173 was a very good luck day and Elliot's birthday, so yep, I gave Elliot a gift for his birthday and I hit the skull cavern for the day. And uh, yeah, that, that's about it, to be honest. Day 174, my bok choy had been harvested by my lovely and paid minimum wage by the hour, I swear, Junimo, so I replace them with some fairy seeds. My journal was now quite full of requests from villagers that I have refused to complete so I spent the afternoon going around and dropping off wanted gifts to citizens of the valley. I felt like Santa again. That night I collected up my ancient fruit wine waiting for me in the quarry before calling it in for the night. Day 175, Gus came out early and visited the farmhouse to lend me a mini jukebox and the recipe to make one. What a nice guy. I then picked my ancient fruit out of my greenhouse and island farm before kicking it all up at the quarry. By my calculations, by the time all of my ancient fruit plants had grown on Ginger Island, I'd have more fruit than I would kegs. So I paid Robin a visit to get myself a shed that I would fill with even more kegs. And back on the farm, I added a few pathways to decorate it a wee bit. I then made a few more crystallariums to add to my shed and cooked a few more meals to add to my collection, which pretty much kept me busy until bedtime. Day 176, I stuck a wild plum in a preserve jar to make some jam that I can add to my shipping collection and my amaranth had been harvested and so I replaced them with some artichoke seeds. While passing through town I checked the special quest board and probably got the easiest crop order quest I've ever seen. 100 cranberries and I've already got a field full of them. Too easy. Over on the island I picked up Mr. Key's danger in the deep quest which resets the mines and makes it harder to get to the bottom. So I made a start on making my way down. By the end of the day I had made it to level 20. Not too bad and I thought I was in good stead to have the mines completed by the end of the week. Week. Day 177, I shipped over 200 cranberries, which finished the crop order quest in record time. And then I went back to the mines. I was having trouble with doing enough damage, and my galaxy sword just wasn't putting out, especially when surrounded by flying squid. But I managed to get to level 50 and a few radioactive ore before calling it a night. Day 178, I was straight back to the mines and I kept progressing down, but it was on level 52 that I met this disgusting ghost thing, which, if it hits me, makes me too nauseated to eat. So I ran away, but I had a plan. I bought myself the Infinity Gavel from the Adventurer's Guild, which I then took to the forge up at the volcano. I got myself Artful, which halves the ability cooldown, and forged three rubies into it, giving it more damage. So I went back and my gavel was working quite well. I was definitely getting through these monster filled floors a lot faster than before, but unfortunately I passed out on floor 59. It was a rainy day on day 179, so I picked my yams and did some chores around the farm. Over at One Willow Lane, I gave Sam and Sebastian some solid music advice. I told Kent he shouldn't blame Jody for popping popcorn, and gave Jody a diamond for her birthday. I popped into Robin's and got myself a deluxe shed upgrade for my keg shed, and paid Clint a visit to buy a load of copper and iron ore, which I spent the rest of the day smelting. For those wondering why I didn't go back to the mines today, it's because I had a plan to complete them on the last day, but I won't give anything away too soon. The rain continued continued on day 180 and I got myself some corn seeds to plant in my crop area. I dropped a parsnip into a preserve jar to make pickled parsnips, something to add to my shipping collection, and then I continued to smelt ore. I popped by Robins to buy wood, but I totally forgot that she's on my farm right now upgrading my shed, so obviously she isn't there. After smelting most of my ores, I was a bit lost on what to do, so I just went to bed. Day 181, the sun was finally shining again and it was Abigail's birthday, so I gave her an amethyst. I did another geode unboxing over at Clint's in hopes of getting some of the last minerals I needed, but alas, it wasn't meant to be. I actually I accidentally took my anger out by bonking Clip Clop's rear end with my gavel. I even went back with normal geodes to try again, but it seriously just wasn't meant to be. But I wanted to donate something. So over in the desert and by the river, I dug up two strange dolls that I could donate to the museum. I paid Robin a visit and got my wood and I wanted yesterday, and back on the farm I made exactly 138 kegs, which I filled my newly upgraded shed with. Up at the quarry that night, you already know what time it is. Look at all that wine. Look at all that gold! Day 182, I collected all of my ancient fruit from my greenhouse and island farm and kegged them up at the quarry. But I filled up every single keg and I still had ancient fruit left over so I utilised my keg shed. I bought some eggplant seeds to replace my pumpkins that had been harvested and then it was time to enact my genius plan to reach the bottom of the mines. Yeah, I, I just used my jade stone to buy staircases at the desert trader and then I used them to get to the bottom. It's not cheating I reckon, just pure ingenuity at its finest. And 50 free key gems might I add. 
Jody came to visit me on day 183 and she kindly invited me around for dinner that night, provided I bring a largemouth bass when I arrive. But over on Ginger Island, I visited Mr. Key's walnut room and the danger in the deep was available again, so yep, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on Sunday. With my key gems, I bought myself the horse flute, which means I can teleport my trusty clip clop anywhere at any time. Today was also Sandy's birthday, so I gave her a lovely flower. I spent the afternoon working on decorating this little area below my crop fields for my obelisks, and then I took a largemouth bass with me to One Willow Lane and indulged in a lovely fish casserole with everyone before heading to bed myself. Day 184, I went to get my first obelisk from the wizard's tower, but of course it's in my nature to forget a festival is on, so it was locked. But I did put up a lovely Grange display at the Valley Fair and won myself first place. Day 185, it was back to the wizard's tower and this time I got myself the island obelisk. Over at Pierre's, I got myself some corn seeds to plant and planted them in my top field back on the farm. I paid Robin a visit and painted my keg shed before heading over to Ginger Island and making my way through the volcano dungeon. I was specifically looking for golden walnuts and those little machine gadgets. Afterwards I picked my pineapple on the island farm and finished the day off doing some chores around the farm. Day 186 I popped by Marnie's and found Shane being a drunk in his room and then I gave Marnie a diamond for her birthday. On Ginger Island I was trying to find some more golden walnuts and managed to get my hands on an ostrich egg which I immediately took home with me. I made an ostrich incubator which I placed in my barn and placed my egg inside of it. I I joined Abigail up at the lake and played some music with her. And back on Ginger Island, I used some of my golden walnuts to unlock the island travel system and then I went to bed. Marnie braved the rain and visited me in the morning of day 187 as she wanted a cave carrot for her goat. I took a duck mayonnaise over to the saloon and got myself the second secret statue which I placed back on the farm by my slime hutch. I realized that one of the golden walnuts I had to get was hiding in a tree and to get it I needed a slingshot. So I paid Marlin and Gil a visit but for some reason he wasn't selling one. So maybe I'll have to come back another day? But with nothing else much to do I headed to bed for an early night's sleep. On day 188 I visited Carol line in her sunroom so I could get them tea leaves. Two items I needed for my shipping collection were tea leaves and green tea, so I wanted to unlock the sunroom so I could collect her tea leaves at the end of the season. We sidetracked a little bit and Caroline got a bit wet on me, but hey, who am I to judge? But it gave me the perfect idea for my last room undecorated in the farmhouse. I was going to turn it into a coffee and tea room. So I filled it with some garden pots, kegs, a couple of tables and decorations, and by the end of the day I had a wonderful looking room. I finished my day off collecting all that sweet sweet money making ancient fruit wine. Day 189 was a repeat of today one week ago, but it was also Robin's birthday. So I collected all of my ancient fruit, kegged it up at the quarry and in my keg shed. Popped into Robin's to give her some goat cheese for her birthday and staircase to my way down to the bottom of the mines, which gave me another 50 key gems. Day 190, I took some maple syrup to the secret forest and had a lovely chat with the talking bear, who gave me the ability to sell salmon berries and blackberries at three times the gold. What an absolute score. Over in Mr. Key's walnut room, I spent my key gems on two ender chests, I mean junimo chests, and wow, look at that, danger in the deep again. I placed down my junimo chest next to both my houses and placed some tools in there that I hardly use anymore. I headed over to Caroline's sunroom and picked off a tea leaf and took it home. I crafted some tea saplings and planted them in my tea room along with some coffee plants. Very nice me, very nice. I had received a few more cooking recipes over the last few weeks and so I spent the rest of the night making them before calling it an early night. It was day 191 and I was back to the sunroom to yoink one last tea leaf which I put into one of my kegs. Down at the wizard's tower I bought myself two more obelisks, the earth obelisk and water obelisk which left me with just one to get. Once my tea was done I shipped off both the tea and tea leaves to add to my collection before bed. Day 192 I was ticking off more villager requests from my journal and down in the skull cavern gathering resources. Day 193 I decided I wanted to forge my tools so I ended up getting the swift enchantment on both my axe and pickaxe meaning they swing faster. Probably one of the better enchantments to have. I then spent the rest of the day in the kitchen whipping up some delicious meals to add to my collection. Day 194 was another skull cavern run and I ended up completing the mummy monster to slay a goal today, but apart from that, nothing else really happened. Day 195 was the exact same. I hit the skull cavern again in search of minerals and resources, but this time I managed to complete the serpent monster slay a goal. But it was Saturday night, so I collected my ancient fruit wine from the quarry and keg shed, and in total I sold 482 bottles of wine, which would give me just over 1.1 million gold. Hey now, that's some good profit. It was the Spirit Sea Festival again, so I stayed up past my bedtime to run through the maze and get myself the gold.
golden pumpkin before heading to bed. On day 196, I took a break from the dusty smell of the skull caverns and collected all of my ancient fruit from my greenhouse and island farm and shoved them into kegs. I got my final obelisk from the wizard's tower, the desert obelisk, and my collection was complete. Although I forgot to record that part, so here they all are on the farm. Down in the mines, I spent the rest of the night putting my ingenuity to the test by staircasing my way down to the bottom of the mines again. But hey, it works. Day 197 was the very first day of my second winter in the valley and my ostrich had finally hatched. So I named him Henry. Already sick of the cold weather, I travelled over to Ginger Island to pick my pineapples and spend my key gems on Pierre's missing stock list. Back in town, I dropped off a birthday gift to Crobus and handed Pierre his missing stock list, which gives me access to buy any seeds during any season. Over at the saloon, I bought myself some more salads and decided to clear out the dig site over on the island before bedtime. Day 198, it's time for the final segment of panning with Poxio. God, I spent all day here. How is it possible that I cannot find this stupid mother ring? Day 199, I paid a visit to Marnie's and stocked up on some hay for the animals during the winter time. I got myself the third and final secret statue from Vincent's room and gave Linus a big juicy cactus root for his birthday. And finally, day 200. All I did today was spend it soaking in the hot spa, reflecting and reminiscing on the last 200 days. I've seen to make this a tradition in my final day, soaking in the spa, but hey, it's not a bad way to finish a hectic 100 days. And there you have it, 200 days in Stardew Valley is finished and complete. But let's answer our ultimate question, how far did I get? While looking at our total earnings, we've made 6.6 .6 million gold so far. We've maxed out our player skills. Our friendships could be a little better, but they definitely look a lot healthier than they did when we started. We've certainly got a long way to go to crafting everything, but I've accumulated a lot of recipes. I did pretty well shipping everything as I've only got seven missing things to ship. I caught every single fish. I've got five other artifacts to find, only two minerals that are very elusive, and sure cooking will take a while too but I made a good effort to cook as much as I could. Up at the guild I had one monster slayer goal left which are the pepperexes and my final percentage towards perfection is... 49%, which after 200 days in the valley, I think is a pretty damn good effort if you ask me. Here's a look at the farm in its entirety. I got a screenshot of it on the last day of four, and I'm genuinely so happy with how it looks. And guys, that is it. I'm not sure if I want to do a 300 days and finish it off. Maybe if this video gets like 10,000 likes, then I'll know that you want me to keep going. If I do it, it won't be for a while because genuinely these videos take so much effort to make, but uh, they are fun, and I have, I've got heaps of ideas for upcoming videos. So if you have made it this far, I just want to say thank you so much for sticking to the end and I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel for all things Stardew Valley. You are all wonderful people, so have a wonderful day and thanks for watching everyone. <laughs>